thank you. I'm thankful to be back here again tonight. And uh, one thing I have not mastered is uh, giving proper thanks uh, to folks. And I want to uh, do that again about this church. I'm thankful for it. Thankful for Brother Larry. And I'm thankful for being able to meet all of you last night and some new people tonight. And that's a blessing. And, um, and I want to tell you this. Uh, there's nothing, you know, people say, well, you shouldn't be proud of this or you shouldn't be proud of that. Pride, you know. And I, I, I tend to take it like this. Pride is a problem when you're proud of yourself, but it's not bad to be proud of others. Right. And um, so it, it was exciting to me to, when I tried, I'd never been here, to step into this church and feel the happiness and joy of people because you don't get that everywhere. Right. Uh, so that's a blessing. So I want to encourage you in that. Uh, keep it up. Um, there, there is joy in the Lord. And we, we must not forget that. I want to thank you for that. And then, of course, the accommodations has been outstanding. And I want to say this, that um, as, a, as a pastor, as a preacher, sometimes you, you, and I don't mean this in a bad way, you question what is the Lord doing? And I told Brother Larry this, that this is nothing new to him as we ate lunch today. Even flying up here, I thought, why me, Lord? Why out of all the brethren that Brother Larry knows, why am I the one coming? But he's made it abundantly clear to me that I have no doubt that I, it's uh, of the Lord that I'm here, and I don't mean that in a prideful way. I needed to be here. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I needed to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord has uh, blessed me in that, that I've been able to pull away from everything I know Amen. and be here. Feels like on the other side of the universe to me, but <laughs> to be here with the Lord's people. And uh, so I'm already experiencing revival is what I'm trying to get to. Amen. And uh, so it, this week will not be a failure because we've already got victory. And uh, I'm thankful for that. Well, if you would, take your Bibles and go to the book of Haggai. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot, because I asked you last night and everyone was very honest, so I'm going to ask you again, have you prayed for this meeting? Amen. Have you prayed today for this meeting? Yeah. Yeah. And then I really ask you, did you pray for your president? I see some heads nodding yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And for those that was not here last night, that might come up again, but uh, uh -oh. we'll, we'll get to it. But uh, that's not my, that's not my, heard you say, oh, that's not my target. But uh, anyhow, I'll go ahead and tell you now in case I don't, I, I asked the question last night, are you doing what the Bible says and praying mm -hmm. for the leaders of this nation? And because uh, it's important, Amen. because it's God's will, that's why it's important. So anyhow, I'll review a little bit just to get us back into where we need to be to remember what's going on and uh, where we left off. And you remember last night, and for those that were not here, this is where I started last night, but I, I talked about the need of revival in our time, the need of uh, the understanding of the importance of revival. And I started off with the definition, and I'm not going to read all of it, but I'm going to read uh, one view of it, and that was the third definition in Webster's 1828, and it means to recall. It means to return or recovery from a state of neglect, mm -hmm. oblivion, obscurity, or depression, as the revival of letters of learning. And we're at a time right now, we need revival. And not just this church and not just the church I pastor and the other pastors in here. We need revival in America. Amen. And there's no revival coming for America unless it starts in the Lord's churches. You're right. And uh, you, you don't need gimmicks and lights and shows. It takes the revival of one of the Lord's people to make another one want to know what's going on. Amen. So we need revival in a great way. We know God's still on the throne, as I mentioned last night. He's still on the throne. Jesus is still at his right hand. And we know there's breath in our lungs tonight. So what's that mean? There's still a chance for revival. Amen. And I believe it. <laughs> last night I read in 2 Chronicles 7, uh, verses 12 through 22, 
And we, we took our, our start there. But remember, I said for there to be revival, there must be humility. When hu humility arrives on the scene, what happens then is honesty prevails. Mm -hmm. You cannot be humble and prideful at the same time. And when you're prideful, you tend to inflate things. There but you when go. you're humble, you see things as they are. And it brings you down to truth. There you go. We get to the root of it. So it's very important. So humility must come first. Honesty will prevail. And when honesty prevails, there is an opportunity for revival. Mm -hmm. So as we continue tonight in the book of Haggai, I would like to just remind you of that background. Remember, Haggai comes on the scene. He's the first of three prophets that delivers the word of the Lord after the captivity of the Babylonians, or of being of captive of the Babylonians. And Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and Habakkuk and Obadiah, they prophesied in and near the end of captivity. But the Lord was still working after captivity. Amen. So we know uh, a bit about the book of Haggai. And I said last night, if we had to summarize the whole book, it would be this. This is how I'd summarize it. Finish what was started. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we'll get started tonight is we need to finish what we've been granted authority with. Mm -hmm. I say it in this, the Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church. You're right. Amen. He is the head of the church. His word rules. That's it. His way goes. And we are the instruments used by him. And he has left the church and the doctrine of the church and the importance of the church. He's left it in our hands. Mm -hmm. And I'll preface that. I want to say we know the Lord's in. He's the head. He's in charge. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of doctrines and things we can argue over in the Bible. But a lot of them, you, you, Pastor, you and I can't change them. We can argue to the end of time. It's done in heaven. But one thing he has left is the church here on this Amen. earth. Amen. And he's put it in our care. And we better be diligent in the care of it. Well, you think about Haggai here, what's going on? We find here in chapter 1, as we started last night, we really didn't make it past verse 2. But I'm going to read the first five verses again, and then we'll carry on tonight. In chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house I waste? Mm -hmm. I'd like to have a word of prayer before we get started in this. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we do come back to Thee again in prayer. And Father, as we deal with something as important, something so divine as Thy Word, Father, we do pray for Thy message to come through tonight. Uh, no one here cares what a man thinks. They want to hear Thy Word, Thy message. So, Father, I do pray that you guard my lips, my tongue, and I pray only thy message would come through. Amen. Father, we ask for thy blessings upon this service tonight, and I pray that you just use me how you see fit. Nothing but a weak and base vessel, but, Father, an instrument to be used. So, Father, we just ask for thy blessings upon this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, what do we have here? Well, we remember last night, and it's been on my mind today as we started last night, it really stood out to me that the Lord basically had taken all their excuses away. In mm -hmm. and, and, and one statement, he took their excuses away. And it's right there in verse 2. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time has not come. We need to zero in on the importance of God's word. Amen. We need to remember God's word. And right there when he said, this people say, as I said last night, it is talking about this people, his people, the people that's been brought out of captivity 
by his divine grace and brought forth and placed here and given everything needed. The book of Ezra tells us that. Amen. They were given everything needed to get this temple going. So when he stepped on the scene and he said, this people said, <laughs> he's already telling them, your excuses mean nothing to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. The God and ruler of this world, the, the creator of this world, spoke and said, This people say. Amen. Oh, we can't, we have no excuse that will work with our Almighty God. Amen. We must be diligent people, diligent in the work. So last night I really hit on that a lot, and you're going to hear it throughout the evening, but this people say. And I think about the weakness of our people today. Remember last night I talked about a lot of times we like to just go back. If we could just go back, I, I, I sum it up as this. If we could just get back to those Andy Griffith days. <laughs> when you can walk down the sidewalks and go to church or whatever. But you know what? It was people back then too. Right. They had their problems. <laughs> but though things look good back then, it doesn't mean it cannot be good now. Right. It can be good. That's yeah. what revival is. we got to get our view refocused and go in the right direction. As I studied this morning and had a, had a good time in study and reviewing, I found it very interesting as we continue here, and I hope to make a little more ground tonight, but we very easily could be considered this people. Mm -hmm. As we wonder why we can't get the churches full, mm -hmm. as we wonder why we can't pack the pews, as we wonder why, we wonder why, we, 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 we tend to come up with all these excuses. I really feel like we got to stay focused on what matters. Mm -hmm. we got to be in this Word. And we can't be holding our head down with the Word. We need to hold our head up with the Word. Mm -hmm. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Amen. The world wants to shame us for what we believe. The world wants to shame us for taking a hard line stand. The world wants to shame us, but we got to remember who is in charge. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you, if you start to get in that area of thinking, just remember this people say, because God is removing the excuses. Remember last night, just get you warmed up and we're fixing to take off here. Remember, I told you that we focus on opposition. And we dealt with that. In Ezra 4, you see opposition on the outside. and Ezra 3, we see opposition on the inside. Remember, as the temple was built, as the foundations were laid, remember the people that had seen the old temple was very discouraged by what they saw. Mm -hmm. So there was young people shouting for joy. The older folks were very uh, uh, moved by it. It lacked luster compared to the other temple. But then you had those verbal assault specialists that came on the scene. You remember them. And I, I hope you, you'll have to do some review if you don't. But you remember those, I call them verbal assault specialists, because that's all they were. Mm -hmm. And people were shot down by nothing but their threats and their right. worries and their concerns. And that's when, they, that's when they had started in the foundations, and they wanted to come in and help. And then they said, no, you can't help. We're God's people. We got this. Mm -hmm. So then what they do? They, they revealed who they really were, their troublemakers. So then they went back and wrote letters, and, and they were set, trying to say what a great problem these people are going to be. They're not going to pay your taxes, king. They're not going to do this. They're not going to do that. It's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. And opposition on the outside caused the hands that become feeble. Mm -hmm. All my words. We're in America. All you got to do is just utter a few words and we'll drop the head, stub our toe, and then we hardly ever get started again. Here we go. We got to get back to where we need to be. Well, tonight, remember I titled the message last night, and it's the same tonight, Faltering in Frustration. I want to get back to this focus. So here we go. Look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house I waste? He starts dealing with their excuses. Mm -hmm. Because and remember in verse 2 it says, They say that these, these people say the time has not come. What God did in that moment 
Because remember, when it says by there, and the Bible means in the hand, it was in the message was in the hand of Haggai. God in the hand of Haggai has eliminated and continuing to eliminate their excuses. Right. This people say the time has not come. But look, think about the timeline there. Roughly 14 years had taken place here. When mm -hmm. Haggai comes on the scene and when he's prophesying to this, the foundations were laid. Weeds are growing over the foundation. Right. But now he's saying, but, but you're in your sealed houses. So there must have been time for something. Yeah. There had to, there, you didn't build these in a day. The time was spent on something. And what was it spent on? There you go. And here we are, America. The time is now that we get our eyes off ourselves and back up onto the Lord as we should. We are the only people that is allowed to bow at the throne of grace. Amen. We go to where grace is found. There's no excuse for us. <laughs> you want strength? Throne of grace. Amen. You need help? Throne of grace. But to do that, you've got to be focused. These sealed houses, as many of you might know, they said that some of them said that the cedar, some said Wayne Scott. Uh, the fact is, it means covered, covered houses. Here's this foundation laying exposed, and they are in sealed, covered houses. And these were not just any houses. They were, the, the study of that, and you look at the research of it, they, they were very elegant, nice houses for that time. Right. I've seen some of the old houses around here since I've been here. I, I told Brother Larry, I don't think there's a straight road in this county. but, uh, but uh, So I've got to see plenty of houses as I'm turning. And there's some beautiful houses. with You can tell the detail that's went in on the outside and the, around the windows. And that doesn't just happen. Amen. It takes time. Mm -hmm. I'm staying at a house from 1892 looking at the detail and the craftsmanship and the things going on there. That, you know why you don't see that anymore? We have not the time. There you go. My phone tells me I don't have time. How do you know? Well, I was on it eight hours, and it said I don't have time. <laughs> My computer, had a, I don't have time. It's amazing to me with all the things we have at our hands to help us be more, more organized and better users of time that we don't have time. Mm -hmm. That's right. All those things have done is prove that we do what we want. Right. We do what we want. Mm -hmm. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyes try the children of men. That's Psalms 11, 4. So what do we do here? We got to get back to having a proper focus. Here's one of the focuses. What is the big problem here, what we're reading about? Think about this. Thus, verse 2, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Remember, he says, This people. Mm -hmm. You know what he did there? He pinpointed, It's you. Mm -hmm. It's not Artaxerxes. It's not those Samaritans. It's you. We look out there and say they just won't come to church. There's just no point. The problem could be within. Do we have the right attitude? Do we have the zeal? Are we, are we willing to accept the challenge that God puts before us and be a peculiar people? Yeah. Do we have it? You say, why are you bringing this up? Go to the book of Ezra, if you will. <laughs> Ezra it will be chapter 4 my mind's been on temple a lot today verse 12 verse 12 says be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and bad city, mm. and have set up the walls thereof, and joined the foundations. 
Be it known now unto the king that if this city be builded and the wall set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom? And so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the kings. Now because we have maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor, therefore have we sent and certified the king. That search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers, so shalt thou find in the book of the records, and know that this city is a rebellious city, and hurtful unto kings and provinces, and that they have moved sedition with the same of old time, for which cause was this city destroyed? We certify the king that if this city be built again, and the walls thereof set up, by this means thou shalt have no portion on this side the river. Verse 17, then sent the king an answer unto Rehum, and, uh, or Rehum the cha chancellor, counselor, and Shemshai, the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river, peace, and at such a time. The letter which he sent unto us hath been plainly read before me, and I commanded, and search hath been made, and it is found that this city of old time hath made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river, and toll, and yeah, the river, and toll, and tribute, and custom was paid unto them. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not builded until another commandment shall be given from me. Mm. Remember where we started, this people said. Mm -hmm. Where did it say not to build a temple? We just read it. Where did it say to not build a temple? Where did it say don't go back and worship your God? Where did it say don't build the temple? Don't worship your God? Don't, don't be focused on your Lord? Where did it say it? It didn't. All right. That takes us back to the book of Haggai where he says, this people say. Mm -hmm. You don't play games with God. Amen. It's his word. Mm-hmm. It's his word. Now, for those that would like to argue my point, yes, we understand that the foundations of the temple would be tied into the walls. But remember, the temple, the foundations are being laid. We know Nehemiah comes along and rebuilds the walls. We know that. We get that. But the decree that was made, what was it about the city? The city. So I got to thinking about that, meditating on that. You know what? You know what the heart of any city that's going to be valuable to the Lord has in it? A church. That's it. Yeah. A church. And if we listen to the leaders and those that were opposed, the first thing, what, 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 did, what do they want to shut down right. in a town? There you go. Is it the pubs? Mm -mm. Is it the dancey joints? No. It's the Lord's house. That's it. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's the Lord's house. And they reason for the good of everyone. We have to be people that's devoted and focused. Mm -hmm. We have to get back to what is important. Faltering in frustration, the people have lost their focus. So think about this now. That was our four, first point last night. They look within and they've lost their focus. We must remember that he is all powerful and all knowing. Amen. Before we go to my next point, a look around. See, it was a, a look at, within the problem. Now we're going to look around the problem. But think about this in Exodus 32 1. I want to bring this to your mind. Because we are in times, it's very dangerous the games we play with church. I, I pastor, there's pastors in here. I, I'm going to tell you something because I've been a young man and I've been in church and, and my grandfather used to pastor and I used to sleep through his preaching and and, uh, you know, there's, I say that because I've used every excuse that could be used mm -hmm. by this church. 
But I'm going to tell you, we're in times now, you better not be using excuses with God. Amen. When you come to church and have your excuses, guess who knows the real truth? Mm -hmm. Amen. This people, this people say, Exodus uh, 32, and look at verse 1. It says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, uh, unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, oh, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. I took you to that verse to show you just how quick mm -hmm. God's people can become discouraged. You're right. Moses hasn't even come out of the mount, and we're all ready to move on. Something's got to happen here. We want instant satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Folks, we can't lose our focus. Mm -hmm. We can't lose our focus. Brother Larry mentioned last night, look, the TV is nothing in his life. And I mentioned last night, Fox News, CNN, it is nothing in my life. People ask me, what's going on? Did you see about what's going on? No. You, if you want to tell me, you can. I don't know. And people will say, God, aren't you worried? Aren't you worried you're not going to know what's going on out there? No. Amen. I am not. God is on the throne. Amen. Amen. Jesus is at his right hand. I have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. My sins have not only been covered like the Old Testament, they've been cleansed of the New Testament sin by the blood. Amen. Should I worry? I'm man now. I worry. That's why I don't watch it. <laughs> I don't want to lose my focus because I can end up faltering in frustration. So tonight, let's do this. Let's, let's take a look around the problem. Like I said, we cannot be laid up in our sealed houses. Now, look at the word dwell there. Verse 4, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? That word dwell, it might be surprising to you to find out. The Hebrew word is yashab, and it means this. It means this right here. God has sent us for a work. There you go. It means sit down. Hmm. It means sit down. Is it time to sit down? No. Did the Lord not say he would be with his church always? Amen. Yeah. I had that, and I may have mentioned it last night. I don't know, but I had to really search the scriptures because I had a bunch of people looking at me. What are we going to do, Pastor? Everyone's saying shut down. What are we going to do? The church over there is shut down. That church is shut down. That church is shut down. What are we going to do, Pastor? We'll keep marching. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, well, if you're just a strong man, no, the Bible said he'd be with it all way. Mm -hmm. He'd be with it all way. We cannot be dwelling in our sealed houses. We cannot be losing our focus on what really matters. It means to sit down. It means specifically, this is the definition. This is the Hebrew definition I'm giving you. This is nothing I thought of. It means specifically as judge. As in an ambush. Think about it. How does the ambushes, how, how do they work? Because when the people that's coming in, they don't know they're there. Right. Is that what America sees in us? Mm. Do they even know we're here? Right. That's how you get ambushed. You're walking along and I just don't even know no one's around me. And then they rise up. Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking about. And God has laying it on the line to them. This people, my people. Mm -hmm. I know you. Those people didn't stop you. Your worry, your anxiety stopped you. But let us not forget tonight, it was a temple that was to be built. Mm -hmm. Now we look to the problem. The word I've been searching to get to. Verse 5. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Hmm. Amen. Some of you in here already know it. I know I'm not preaching to people that's never heard the word of God preached. But it means this. Lay it to your heart. Hmm. 
Isn't that what would start a revival if we would all honestly just lay it to our heart? I told you there's already been victory this week. I have been, in the first time in years, I have had complete silence Amen. to be alone with the Lord. You know what happens when you get in complete silence and prayer and just sit with the word and pray? You know what happens? Things are revealed. Mm -hmm. We get down to the real root. Man. We get down to what really matters. And I have already experienced some healing in my life. Hear that? We must consider it. We must lay it to our hearts. We must, it means this, to bethink themselves. It means in the midst of your heart. Take what God has said and place it in the midst of your heart. I believe, I believe this, I'm, I'm going off the notes again here, just as I normally do, but in Revelation chapter one, I think it's an important point to make. Verse 13. Because what he's saying in Haggai, we're to take this and he's telling those Jews, he's telling them to lay this to your heart. The message has come in hand, now lay it to heart. I heard your excuses, now I'm fixing to destroy them one by one, but lay it to your heart. Look at verse 13 of Revelation 1. It says, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the paps, or down, down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool. People forget that his head, because you see that? <laughs> That's not the message. Um, his head and his hairs were white like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Amen. Here's what I'm trying to get you to see. Do you think he's here tonight? Amen. This is a church. Now, I'm not a member of it. I've just been invited to preach. But the members of this church are here. Is he here tonight? Amen. The Bible says he's in the midst. Mm -hmm. What we have forgotten is he's, he's here. Brother Larry, I, I've done this at, at home, and I hope you don't mind. But this is, this, is what, this is what I'm talking about. He's here. Amen. Only the Lord's church has him in the midst. <laughs> Think about that. Think about it, brother. He's here. He's... Brother Ken? <laughs> He's in the truth, moving about in the midst. That's why your excuses won't work. Amen. <laughs> He knows your heart. What he wants you to do is to see your own heart. He wants you to really consider your ways. Consider the word ways. Wait, consider your path. Mm -hmm. Consider your route. Consider your road. Folks, it is not time to give up. 2023 has been a strange year. I'll give you that. Has there been times that me as a pastor, am I looking forward to 2024? Amen. <laughs> it's been a strange year, but what it's been is a year to refocus really on yeah. what matters. He's in the midst of this New Testament church. Well, what are we missing here? Well, we go back to Haggai. This ties in because remember in the Old Testament, what were some things that they would look for to be in the temple? And I'm going to hit this one of the main things that I know of that I think is important. As soon as I get back to where I need to be, I just went past it. And that is glory. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, it, a sign of it is when the cloud would move in, the Shekinah glory would move in. Amen. And it would be in the midst. I just showed you in the book of Revelation, the New Testament church, that he's in the midst. Well, when I get my way back to Haggai, I have to preach in here. I've heard some preachers say they can't preach and turn at the same time. I guess maybe that's true for me. But think about this. 
Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Mm -hmm. You're wanting blessings from me. You know, in that time, my glory must fill the temple. Mm -hmm. Why are you not at work? Mm -hmm. Now, it's a different, different temple today. We can go to 1 Corinthians 3, we can go to 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 3 is talking about the New Testament church. 1 Corinthians 6 is talking about us individually. How's it going? Is the temple being built up? Yeah. Is there room in the temple? Now, thus, therefore, thus saith the Lord, consider your ways. Think about this in verse 6. Ye have so much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Verse 7, he says it again, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Amen. We spend so much time in what seems to be important to us. And I, and I say this at home, so I'm not saying anything here. I do not say it at home. But we put so much time in 401ks and everything else in these retirements and IRAs and got to get everything set up for what? Now, don't get me wrong. You're thinking, man, this poor preacher's crazy. You've got to have a retirement. Yeah, okay, it's okay to have a retirement, but that should not be your God. Amen. What should be your focus is what we just read. Every time the doors are open on this place, there should be people in it. Amen. Amen. And you say, well, what if the other one doesn't come? Well, you should be here. Mm -hmm. And they should be thinking, well, what if they don't come? Then you should be here. Mm -hmm. And that's what our church needs in Florida. And that's what this church needs in Tennessee and wherever you go, Georgia, North Carolina. It's the same thing. Amen. We are to be about the Lord's work. To it. Excuse is gone. Mm -hmm. So now, I want to shift a little bit here. I want to talk about the Lord's church. The book of Haggai is our basis, and that's where we're at. He's questioning those Jews to consider their ways. But now let's bring it up to speed where we are. are we, have we considered our ways? Mm -hmm. Have we lost our zeal to witness? Mm -hmm. Have we lost our zeal to just stick to the word and just trust that it's going to work. It may not, we may not see uh, things happening right now before our eyes, but it's going to work. We just stick to the word. Mm -hmm. I want to take you through some things because there's a lot of things going on in the world about church. Mm -hmm. A lot of different methods being taken, a lot of different avenues to go down. But the Lord only started one form of church. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's shift now because, like I said, we're going to consider our ways. We're going to look at the road and the course of life and action we're going to take here. People have said, I've been accused of making too much of church doctrine. Hmm. I had one pastor say, well, what are you going to do when, when a husband and wife come before you and their, 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 their marriage is dissolving uh, right before their eyes? What are you going to do? How are you going to counsel them when all you think about is church doctrine, church doctrine, church doctrine, church doctrine? And I know you preachers are already going, well, first of all, I'm going to tell him you ought to love your wife. That's Christ loves the church. And you ought to see that you reverence your husband as the church is to Jesus Christ. There's not enough going on, enough stir about church. People, I've had people say it because I'll go to people's doors or I'll see them and I'll hand them, I'll hand them an invitation to church. They say, well, you, what you should have done is witness to them and uh, you know, they could be going, going to hell. And, uh, well, okay, that's your method. Mm -hmm. I want to invite them to something that our Lord came here upon this earth and started. Amen. And he said he'd be with it all the way, and he's in the midst. I want to invite him to come partake of that Amen. and experience that. We must consider our ways, folks. We are blessed to have a building tonight to meet in. The members of this church are blessed to have an opportunity to be in church tonight, and we must be about the business. Amen. We must be about the business. So I'm going to go now uh, to, I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 2. See, those, those Jews were feeding off of each other in Haggai, 
and, and by by some by some words they were they were uh, opposed at that, and then it, it deflated them. They become frustrated, and they started faltering. And when you start faltering, think about the things they missed out on. The Shekinah glory couldn't move in. There wasn't a place to move into. Remember in Ezra, they set up an altar. When they first got back, they had the zeal. They set the altar up. They start worshiping God. But then the time to work come, and everyone sort of got there you go. pushed aside. Well, here's something very interesting. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, and let's go to verse um, 10. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church I will sing praise unto thee. Amen. Now this is our Lord they're talking about. When did he sing in the church? Hmm. It's in your Bible. Right. When did the Lord sing in the church? Lord of Right after. Mm -hmm. Right after. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen in Acts 2. Right. No. Didn't happen. Did. Listen. It happened before. He had finished the final work. Yes, yeah, right. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 says, And God has set some in the church, mm -hmm. first apostles. Yeah. Where did that happen? Luke 6, yeah. Mark 3, Matthew 10. Mm -hmm. Was that after the cross? No. Mm -hmm. The Lord's Supper we just mentioned, when did that happen? Was that after the cross? Mm -hmm. Before. Amen. Amen. You know, you understand Acts 2, verse 1 and on, they, you can't find where the church was commissioned. They were witnessing. They were doing a work. Mm -hmm. but that church was commissioned mm -hmm. back in the Gospels. Amen. Matthew 28. And guess who was there? 11 of them. Amen. People say, I have a man coming to me and say, well, preacher, I came because I was invited, but I'm not into organized religion. I said, really? He says, Jesus did never, he never did that. He never, he never was into organized religion. I said, it, really? He says, yeah. I said, let's turn to John 20. It says, and when the doors were shut. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean like they went into some place and organized mm -hmm. into an assembly? Or when they had the Lord's Supper and there was only those there. You say, where are you going with this preacher tonight? Where are you going with this? Where I'm going with this is God's hand is upon his church. Amen. And it's not with others. Mm -hmm. There's right. many that call themselves churches, but they're not. You're right. They're assemblies by the loose term of the word, the ecclesias, okay, assemblies. But people always want to say, well, the ecclesia is just the called out. No, there's more to that definition if we go back to the antiquity of it. They were called out of their homes and businesses and met in the market square and assembled together. Amen. So I ask you this, just as those Jews and just as the, the Lord said there in the book of Haggai, this people say, what is our excuse hmm. for not focusing we have a God that has his hand upon his church. Mm -hmm. Think about this. If you're in here tonight and you've never trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, you, have, you, are, you are rejecting a Lord that cares so much that he'll turn them and steer them in the direction they need to go. You're rejecting the one and the only one that can save you from your sin. That's a fact. Other religions follow around behind cows and well, go and get splinters on their hands, worshiping wooden dolls and all these things, and they will do nothing for you. That's right. Because you're going to answer to the one that created you. <laughs> These people, these Jews, these ones in the book of Haggai, they have forgotten the blessings they were given. Mm -hmm. The Lord's church is like no other. You say, well, preacher, I hear you, but I, I see a lot of people over at this one and over at that one. 
I don't doubt that. But the Lord's church is going upstream. Mm -hmm. The Lord's church doesn't float with the current. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> Do you know in the Old Testament, you know, you know, if you'll notice the fish they ate, had scales. What do you think those scales are for? Go upstream. You know the fish with scales are the only ones that come out and show all the colors and the beauty and the splendor of the Lord. Listen, the people in the book of Haggai have lost their way because they have lost their way. God is still on the throne and he's still willing to lead you, but you've got to turn back to him. I believe there's folks in here that has not trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I think you hear me tonight. He's willing to save. Mm -hmm. And if he's stirring your heart, he's prompting something there, because we know God draws you. You didn't stumble onto him. You didn't find him by yourself. He draws you unto him. He does that. But then what we do? What do we do? Think about the Ethiopian eunuch. What he did? He professed Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Then he got baptized. Mm -hmm. Oh, the importance of revival. The book of Haggai is talking about the Old Testament temple. There had to be a reviving of that work. As I said, I don't know anything about the folks here tonight. Brother Larry has not shared anything. But I know here last night as I looked out there, I saw some that need the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, there's many in here that have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ that needs reviving. But the greatest revival that could ever take place is when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and know that he is the Savior, that there's no work you can do, there's no paneled houses you can build, you can't escape it. God, you will answer to God, just as Amen. these Jews did for their laziness and their apathy of pushing aside and pushing aside. You will give answer. And I pray you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I pray you come to the understanding and the, the importance of serving and working and being in a true gospel scriptural church. Amen. This idea of get them saved, get them saved, and get them saved, and then what? Well, it doesn't matter. They're saved. No, there's more. Amen. Salvation is the greatest thing, but you understand when God draws you onto him and you put your faith and trust in him, you know, that really wasn't obedience. God saved you. Your first step of obedience is being scripturally baptized. <clears throat> These are serious times. Mm -hmm. There is strange things going on. As I said last night, people's asking, are you preaching prophecy? Are you doing, going through prophecy right now? No, we're going through 1 Corinthians. <laughs> My focus is on the Lord. My focus is on the church to have a proper focus. Because no matter what's going on around us, the church... The people that make up the church must have their focus right. It's important times, folks. Amen. And I hope you understand the reality. And I'll, if I said it once, I've said it a hundred times, but you will give answer for your sin if you have not Jesus Christ. Daddy will not answer for you. Mommy will not answer for you. Sister, brother, aunt, uncle, granny, granddaddy will not answer for you. Right. You will stand before him. <laughs> Remember last night I mentioned in uh, John 3, 19, the word condemnation is the Greek word krisis, K-R-I-S-I-S, where we get our English word crisis. That's the crisis. Mm -hmm. Do you know that same definition is used in Hebrews 9, 27? For it is appointed unto men must die, but after this, the judgment, there's the crisis. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? You can't go back. You stand before him with all your sin to answer for. And you have no advocate. Mm -hmm. I pray you're listening. It's not a game. Mm -hmm. The doctrine of the church is not a game. Mm -hmm. The having the focus to do what God has sent the people back to do is not a game. <laughs> he hasn't come. 
And we're not gone. There's a work to be done. I pray you, I pray you consider these things tonight. Consider your ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Young men, young ladies, consider your ways. Amen. You will give answer. Mm -hmm. uh, you, YouTube, I call it UI. UI might say something different. Uh, Facebook, I call it Facebook. It, it, I don't know. And nothing against that. Those are good tools to be used if they're used properly. But there's people on there that, that Satan has, he has workers out there. Right. Listen to this word. Listen to the preacher as he uses the word. Because some preachers don't. You will give answer. Mm -hmm. These Jews had to answer up before God Almighty. And you know what they did? They got back to work. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been saved, you can't even get to work yet. Mm -hmm. I pray the Lord would help you with this. I was going to go through and point out a lot of the other scriptures to you about the church, which I can do if you'd like to afterwards. But I'm going to tell you something here tonight. Aside from salvation, I can't think of a greater thing to be part of than the Lord's true church. Amen. I can't think of anything better than that. Think about it, as those Jewish people there in the book of Haggai, they pushed off the work and pushed off the work 14 years. Mm -hmm. Procrastination, procrastination, procrastination. But in the end, who did they have to give answer to? God. Mm -hmm. And he takes their excuses away. And that will be you, my friend, if you deny the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Mm -hmm. He did it once. There, there's not going to be another sacrifice. It's the, that's the end. And when you deny that, you will stand before God and answer. Mm -hmm. These Jews had nowhere to run. The message had come by the hand of Haggai. They knew they were caught. And they got back to work. I pray you'd consider these things tonight. Consider your ways. Consider your path. Consider your route. Consider your road. Consider the blessings that we're sitting under. When you go to the bed tonight, in your bed, consider the fact that you get to lay upon a bed where some people in the world today are still laying in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Consider the fact you have clean sheets when some people have no sheets. Consider the fact that you're breathing the air that God made. Amen. Mm -hmm. Are you going to continue to rob? Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Amen. Amen.